You know, it's a great day when you see Jeb Bush in the news. You know, I want Jeb to announce right now he's running for 2024. (laughs) What a great campaign. The 2016 Jeb Bush campaign. Uh, But guys, I just wanted to talk about (coughs) this dynamic of Trump versus DeSantis, where I stand on it. It's kind of a back and forth thing with me personally on... The idea that DeSantis possibly could fare better in a general or probably will fare better in a general election than Trump because Trump is so polarizing amongst some people. This is a really good poll that I want to show everyone that I think illustrates why DeSantis is going to have such a hard time in the primaries. He can still win, but it's going to be harder with more people in the race. So you take a look at the top president, DeSantis leading Trump by three points, 37-34, and then a slew of candidates, I'm guessing, that have less, including Nikki Haley, people like that, but when you cut it down to a two-way, you trim all the fat off, you take all the extra candidates off that will be jamming up the early primary elections, and DeSantis has a much more distinct lead in a place like Virginia. In essence, the people that are voting for Trump are going to vote for Trump no matter what. The people that are voting for Nikki Haley, if she wasn't on there, they would probably lean more towards voting for DeSantis. So the crowded field is going to really hurt DeSantis. That's why Trump hasn't said one negative word, I don't think, about Nikki Haley entering the race because it helps him essentially taking votes and siphoning votes off of DeSantis overall. But if it's just a two-way race, DeSantis looks really good in states like Virginia. And then you look at a recent Florida poll, DeSantis, of course, heavily up there. You know, right now I would probably say I, I, I give Trump a slight edge in terms of like looking at the overall all-encompassing just general popularity polls, Trump still holds a pretty decisive lead, you know, but certain states, DeSantis, like California, that's another state DeSantis is going to do well. I mean, just take a look at all the other, like Mike Pence is another one. I think what's going to hurt DeSantis the most is Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, Rubio, Mike Pompeo, Ted Cruz, you know, anyone like that to where Trump, if those candidates drop out of the race, the people that were voting for them are not flipping to Trump. They're either not going to vote or they're going to vote for DeSantis. So the more crowded the race is, the better it is for Trump. And I've gone back on back and forth on Trump personally as a candidate for 2024. He's just so polarizing. But the main thing with Trump is he's just got so much ammo that he just does not use. And I don't know why. Like this whole January 6th committee, all the stuff that's coming out, all those people that were involved in the January 6th committee should be in prison. That was not an investigation. That is the purest form of a witch hunt. They did not care about anything else other than trying to bring Donald Trump down. That's it. They're doing this prime time so people can watch. It is a total kangaroo court. You have Fox News interviewing one of the lead officers involved with January 6th, and he says he didn't even get a phone call from the January 6th committee because they were so obsessed with Trump. They didn't want to talk about the police failure on January 6th. They wanted to talk about how Trump and how it's an insurrection and how it's illegal and how Trump should be in prison and he should be indicted. And it's like, if you're Donald Trump and someone comes at you with how bad January 6th was, you've got all this evidence against it. And it's not even just the January 6th thing to where it's a complete witch hunt. It's going back to the Mueller report. So you have Democrats saying Trump can't accept losing, and I agree. I think no matter what, if Trump lost in 2020, he was going to challenge it. He was going to say it's rigged. That's what Trump is. That's his ego. That's the negative of Trump. 
But my, number one, you can't be gaslighting people and saying it's the most secure election in U.S. history when that is just completely false. That's another thing with the Democrats. Why are you gaslighting people? The 2020 election had a record number of mail-in ballots. You have countries across the globe that literally ban mail-in ballots because mail-in ballots are known to have massive voter fraud. And you mean to tell me the one election that has rampant mail-in voting is the most secure and safe election in U.S. history? The level of gaslighting is out of control, but it's even better for Trump because you can go back and you can say, didn't you guys have a two-year investigation with all your conspiracy theories that Russia colluded because you couldn't accept and cope with the fact that Hillary lost in 2016, so you threw millions and millions of dollars in CNN every day? The Mueller report, what are the findings? How did Russia do this? Of course, it never made any sense anyways. And it got proven that there was no real collusion and they wasted all that money. But no, Democrats are the only ones that get to do that, I guess. And then the insurrection happens. There's so many FBI informants. They try and drum it up. They try and make it a Reichstag event to where they, the Democrats, especially the, the ones that were strategic, they wanted January 6th. This is the dirty little secret. They wanted January 6th to be as bloody as possible because the more blood, the more chaos, the more mess during the insurrection, that's why they had FBI informants go in there and jazz all the dumb Trump, you know, supporters up that went into it because unfortunately it was, you know, a lot of dumb people falling for that and going in. Of course, you should never do anything like that. You immediately give up your political leverage. That's exactly what happened to Republicans when that event happened. You had Democrats saying, we need to do certain things, and that's where the whole, you know, Germany Reichstag fire comes into play. The idea is you do things, blame it on the other party, and say, to combat this, we need to have more power over these people so an insurrection doesn't happen again. That's exactly what they do. So they want to make it as bad as possible so you can say, we're going to use this, this insurrection, this horrible thing that Trump and his supporters did and Republicans did, we're going to use this as a way to, uh, you know, move independence on our side and really create power over these people. So if you're Trump, you have so much crap against these people and I just don't hear Trump say, use any of it. I mean, he, it's just always the same stuff. So Trump really needs to be on the offense, I think. And then the other thing with Trump going after DeSantis, I think DeSantis is handling this perfectly by not saying anything, not engaging the political advice and the political strategy that he's employing right now is correct. You haven't even announced you're running at, you know, as a candidate. There's no reason to go after Trump and alienate people, even if Trump wants to do his two-year-old little routine and, and call you names and whatever, just don't engage with it, you know, if you're DeSantis. So, I think DeSantis is doing a good thing there. Overall, again, I would probably say I'd give Trump a slight edge, but in terms of the general election, who would you rather wa want to beat? whether it's Biden or whoever, there, there's a few things you can talk about with Biden. Number one, if they're going to run Biden again, the economy will improve, even if it slightly improves. If you guys remember, it, it's funny, they will do certain things to artificially create a better economic environment. It's the exact thing that happened in, 20, in 2022 during the midterms where... If you remember, the economy got a little bit better like um, three or four weeks before the midterms and Biden and, and the Democrats overperformed. They're going to do that again. With the Democrats, the question is, can you drag Biden over the finish line and, and really have him as a viable candidate for the independent vote? You know, is can he still argue? Can he still debate? Things like that. Uh, of course, it might not matter. We saw with John Fetterman, who was literally brain dead, uh, in a debate against Dr. Oz. And I'm not saying Dr. Oz is some great candidate. I think John Fetterman is a perfect example of the unhealthy obsession people have with their political party. You have Democrats that cannot detach from the idea 
that, you know, the dirty little secret is it, you could put up a pig. If the pig is voting Democrat, they will vote for the pig over the Republican. And it's the same thing Republicans do. But I think John Fetterman is the perfect example. He's in a debate with Dr. Oz. He's brain dead. He can't answer questions. They still elect him because he's a Democrat and he'll vote with them. And then a month later, he's in the hospital. And like, I mean, he's not able to function, you know? And this isn't me making fun of John Fetterman. This is how politics is and how ridiculous it is. Both parties, they will vote for brain dead people if it means, you know, their party gets into power and it's another Democrat vote. It is, it's sad and it's it's just, you know, pathetic, honestly, that that's where we are in terms of the U.S. political system Overall, so Trump and DeSantis, I think for DeSantis, he needs the field to dwindle quickly. He needs these people to drop out because if they drop out, the people that were voting for the Nikki Haley's, the people that were voting for the Mike Pence's, they're more likely to go to DeSantis as opposed to Trump, who's got a virtual guarantee 30 to 40 percent, or I'd say around 30 percent stone rock solid Republican support, but the issue with the general election is he is polarizing, and, and, and there does there is the problem. We know the Democrats are going to attack Trump on January 6. The bad thing for the Democrats is they've pigeonholed themselves so much because they've been so obsessed with calling Trump Hitler. If DeSantis gets the nomination. I mean, I've already seen it happening. You've got Democrats now saying, oh, DeSantis is actually worse than Trump now because he's smarter and he's more shrewd and he can get stuff done. And now they're calling DeSantis a fascist, I guess. I guess you might as well just call DeSantis Hitler too, right? I mean, it is a total clown show. So we will see what happens between... Trump, DeSantis, and any other Republican, you know, will someone else emerge? It's hard to say. It seems unlikely right now. It seems like Trump basically has 30% of the support guaranteed. DeSantis is kind of the other candidate that the establishment supports. I mean, I think Mitch McConnell supported DeSantis, which is not a good thing for DeSantis. Uh, But, you know, kind of the establishment is going with DeSantis at this point. I would say, obviously, the more Republican candidates, the better it is for Trump. And this was just something that I saw and I wanted to screenshot it. So this is a tweet back in 2020. This is how brain dead these news organizations are. And just, so let me just, dozens of public health and disease experts. So these are disease experts have signed an open letter in support of nationwide anti-racism protests, anti-racism protests, aka the BLM protests that destroyed billions of dollars in property value. They made Minneapolis look like Austria in 1945. White supremacy is a lethal public health issue that predates the pandemic. So I I, I can't do it. I really can't. This is from 2020, but it is just so mind-blowingly hilarious to read this type of stuff. I mean, (laughs) you want to talk about hypocrisy. They're they're telling us to stay in our homes, but no. Because think about it, guys. You know what these people, if health officials came out and said you shouldn't protest, they would get labeled racist. So they're scared. They don't want to be labeled racist. So no, go out and protest even though we've been saying to stay in your homes, even though we've killed every small business out there. Now you can go protest and burn down buildings and everything like that and everything's fine. That's America in 2020. (laughs) But no, I'm racist. I should be canceled. Yes, 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 of course. And then we've got this. So this is another great gaslighting thing. An illegal alien raped, tortured, and murdered a 12-year-old French girl, and this is how the media covered it. France's far right adopts murdered schoolgirl. That is one of the headlines. France's far right adopts murdered schoolgirl. France's far right is exploiting a 12-year-old girl's murder. Schoolgirl's killing shocks France and fuels right-wing fury. Gruesome killing of 12-year-old girl shocks France and sparks far-right 
backlash. So it is pure gaslighting. If the illegal alien murders your mother and you say something about it, no, you're racist. You're far right. It's just like with some of these dumb, liberal, 20-year-old girls, it's like they get raped by a black dude and then they apologize to the black dude for being white. That's where we're at with race right now in America. But no, I need to be canceled. You might you just, just cancel me. I'm racist. You see, this is just for pointing anything, uh, any of this out, according to CNN, according to MSNBC, you are racist and then they gaslight you. Yes, an illegal alien kills your mom, but no, it's you, if you speak out against it, you're racist against illegal immigrants. Yep, it makes perfect sense. It is pure gaslighting. It is the exact same thing they've been doing. So guys, when it comes to the Republicans right now, I think Trump needs to go on a major offensive after all this January 6th stuff comes out. How about that idiot old dumbass Chuck Schumer? Isn't it so sad? This is one of the things that's so sad. So he comes out and says that Fox News should censor Tucker Carlson from releasing the January 6th footage. What American citizen wants government to censor January 6th footage? Don't we want total transparency? It is so sad that someone seriously think, thinks it's a good political strategy to argue that we need, we need to censor footage. It's just, oh my God, you know, there's just no transparency. These And then it's like, some Democrats want that to happen. It's like, yeah, censor it. Like, what are you talking about, man? Don't you want it all out in the open? I mean, come on. So guys, when it comes to the race, Trump, DeSantis, you know, it, it, it's going to come down to if DeSantis can get these people to drop out, he really has a chance for sure, but he needs to do it. And he's already leading right now in Florida, I think New York, Virginia, California. So he's going to get a lot of delegates, but um, it just comes down to getting some of these other people out of the race and then a Trump versus DeSantis super showdown. And Trump does need to go on a major offensive to just point out the crazy hypocrisy, the Mueller report. So you're going to yell at me for trying to say the election's rigged when you had an investigation for two years that was a, just a pathetic conspiracy theory. That's another thing. Notice how they never called the Russian collusion a conspiracy theory because they know the word conspiracy theory, they've made it to where it devalues any argument they have. So they only use the word conspiracy theory when they're addressing right-wing arguments. But they had a huge pathetic conspiracy theory about Russia collusion that turns out to be false. But we can't talk about that. We just have to talk about the fake insurrection, the January 6th thing, which was completely gaslighted by FBI informants. And it is all coming out. It is all a joke. Of course they did it. It makes perfect sense. If you want to gain a political upper hand stage something or or you know have some involvement you want January 6th to be as ugly as possible so you can say this is bad we need to go against this it's Hitler it, it's the Reichstag fire it's blaming the communists it's telling the people look at this look how bad these people are the communists are the enemies the Republicans are the enemies look at this insurrection look at how violent they are they wanted it to be as violent as humanly possible and now it's all coming out and it's like, no, I mean, look at these photos. They're walking them around. The police are escorting them around. It is not what you think. And all of those people in that sham January 6th committee should all be jailed and they should all be sued by the American people for wasting our taxpayer money trying to score a political witch hunt against Donald Trump. They're all disgusting. There's no investigation into actually what happened on January 6th, like the police uh, not being prepared for it. The head police chief doesn't even receive a call from them because they don't care. They just want to go after Trump. Any smoke and gun on Trump, that's all that matters. Anything Trump is involved with, stoking the flames, how can we charge him with all of this stuff, that's all they cared about. So it was completely fake. It was a total witch hunt. That's really what Trump should go after. So guys, we'll see what ends up happening. But that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter.
Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.